Let's have a look at this um, branch takeoff. So you can see we've got two pieces here. What you can't quite see from that view is the seam is on that shorter side there on the top. The back seam's there. Um, we've got center line measurements. So we're going to work off a center line for this one. Let's go to Inventor. Do a new sheet metal. Let's start a sketch on our XY plane again. And we're going to do a line. So I'm going to do construction lines for this, for these center lines here. Go straight up at 300. And I press escape. So it says it's fully constrained. That's good. And then I'm going to draw a line off here. I'm just going to plot it there for now. Uh, we know the angle is 45, so let's throw that dimension in there. And the length overall is 300 of that line there, so we'll click on it and then click just off the edge, so it's a parallel dimension. And we're still saying we need one dimension, which will be the height from the bottom here, so that's going to be 50 from that point to that point. So the height of 50. So let's uh, finish that sketch there. What I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to put some planes around these um, end points here. So the first thing I might do is uh, just point, make sure I have a point on them. And we're going to go down this option list here to normal to axis through point. So let's click this as the axis and that is the point. So that's going to make it 90 degrees to our line there. All normal to, as they say here. Let's do the same thing again. Normal to axis through point. There to there. And do the same thing again. Yeah. So now we've got our sort of like a skeleton of what we're doing. We can have a look at the drawing. We've got a 200 inside diameter for the main trunk. So let's draw that up. So let's go start sketch up here. Should pick up on this point automatically. It does. Let's do a circle at 200. Finish that sketch. Now let's roll around to the underside of that plane. Start a sketch on this one. And we'll do the same thing. Circle, 200. Let's roll this around. And the branch itself is 100 diameter outside. So we've got an inside and an outside on this one. So let's draw a circle at 100 diameter on this plane. Should pick up on that point again. 100. And we're still blue, so it may not have quite picked up on that. So let's drag it out of the way and we'll go project geometry Make sure that point is projected. Then we'll go coincident constraint here. Point to point. Now we're constrained. It knows where everything is. And I'm just going to set up my home view on this one because I want to be able to see it. Um, it's hard to navigate around a little bit. So set current view as home, fit to view. So now I can turn these um, work planes off here. These work points. If I hold control and click on all these ones that are visible, I can quickly grab a bunch and turn the visibility off there. Now we need to set our thickness of the metal. So let's go back to the drawing 0.75 millimeter stainless. 
let's turn this sheet metal defaults on, untick the thickness from rule, go 0 0.75 millimeters, apply, and we're going to go up to here and turn it to stainless steel. And that one will do there. So for the first thing, let's go to a lofted flange. And this is going to be rolled, so we'll go die form here. I'll click on this and this. Should give us our main cylinder. And let's make sure that's going outside because this one's in is uh, 200 on the inside. So we want to make sure it's going outside of this of the drawing. That's that one there. there's our main cylinder. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to 3D model and I'm going to extrude this circle. It's already picked up on it and we're going to go to this. An important selection here is this, is you've got to have on new solid. So that's going to create a new part. So we have the main cylinder, this cylinder. So we can go OK there, and we've got two solids in our, in our part. We've got this part and this part here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude a hole through this part and through the branch as well, or through the actual trunk. So we'll do that by starting a sketch on here. I'm going to make sure I project the geometry of the outside of that circle. Zoom in a bit. We can offset that circle 0 0.75 for the thickness. So we have the same thickness on um, all the parts. That's really important for this being able to fold flat. And now what we can do, we've got that inside of the, um, the branch there drawn. We can go to extrude, grab the inside of the circle. We might need to zoom in to make sure you're not getting the outside as well inside there and we can go to click on the inside of this part and make sure we're in cutting and cutting it says here solid one solid we want to click on that and make sure we're cutting both solids so we've got a hole that goes right through both parts here now let's go okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Turn this sketch off because it's slightly ruining my visibility here. So I'm going to come turn the visibility off on that one. And I'm going to come up to my origin and drop these down. I'm going to turn on the plane that splits these down the middle. And I'm just going to create a couple points here for, for ripping the parts um, so we can make the flat pattern. So you can see the holes gone right through there. So let's get on to back to sheet metal tab. We could use this point here, but we might as well go into sheet metal because we're there anyway. Point, and let's make sure we pick the plane and the edge there. And we'll do the same here. So we'll do the plane and the edge. So we've got two points. We can press escape to make sure we're out of it. Right click over here to turn the plane visibility off. And I'm just going to do a rip down both parts. So rip face is this face. The point is this point. It's automatically going to know it's going straight down. And I'm just doing 0 0.1 because I'm not um, concerned about having a big gap there. And then I'm going to do the same thing again with... Uh, branch. So let's go rip, select the face, select the point, 0 0.1, apply. Close out of that. Now I'm just going to turn these work points off because I don't need them on anymore. Turn the visibility off there and there. Collapse all of these bits. Put it back to my home view there. Now I'm going to save this as an, a part by itself. So let's find the folder that it goes in. 
might need to right click and create one. So let's go branch, take off. Save their IPT there. Right, so now that's saved, we can come over here to manage and we can go make components. So this will make it into two separate parts. So we want to drop down here and we'll go standard millimeter IAM and We'll select one and two, and it pays just to remember what one you grab first. You can hover over it. So solid one is the trunk, and solid two is the branch. So let's go next here. I'm going to rename solid one as trunk, solid two as branch, template. I'm going to Double click this and put it on sheet metal. I should be able to do the same with this one. For whatever reason, these don't always pop up straight away, so you've got to click on this top part. File location, let's just make sure it's going to the right thing. So there's my folder. Okay, so that's good. And let's just make sure that's going to the same one as well. And let's hit apply. So this should turn it into two individual parts. We can close out of that. Minimize all this stuff over the left here. And I'm just going to control S. Just save that IPT file. Close out of that. Now I'm in that IAM file, because that's what we just did. We made those two parts into an assembly through that um, Manage Make Components tab. So now I'm just going to change the view to shaded with edges, just to make it a bit easy to see what's going on here. And I can double click on either one, double click on the trunk, create a flat pattern. there we have our flat pan for our trunk. So the thicker it is, the more, more you'll notice this, but you can see that it's got a slight angle because it's cut through that thickness on that angle as well. So there is a slight difference if you turn it around to the back face or the front face. Um, it's probably pretty negligible. So let's left click on this one, then right click export face as a DWG in the correct folder trunk flat pattern go back to the folded part double click the middle mouse button and we'll go control S just to save that so now it'll be saved with the um, flat pattern in it let's close that one and we'll do the same thing for the branch here so I'll double click on the branch create a flat pattern click left click right click export face as DWG so I'm going to call this branch flat pattern Go to the folded part, double click the middle mouse button so it brings it into, into view. Once again, control S. Close out of that. I'm going to hit close out of this one. Yes, I do want to save changes to the IAM file. So now that's all drawn up. So let's look in our folder. branch takeoff here we have the part file with um, both of them joined together we have a flat pattern and a, another flat pattern so two different flat patterns so far 
Now we're going to go into our uh, drawing template here and we're just going to lay it out and then export it as a PDF. So let's go into this one, go base, find the branch takeoff. And I'll put it in this view. I think that's the best, um, most detailed view we have. And the options aren't very good for dragging, so I might type in one to one to three. See what that looks like. That looks pretty good. Um, hidden line removed, shaded, tangent edges. Okay. So there's our view for the corner. Now let's go into base and bring in our third angle projection view. So I'll go my branch takeoff again. See what view it starts with. So yep, that's good. And I might do these views in. No, I'll stick with one to three. That's good enough. Make sure the solid is off. We want this to be black and white. Let's go. OK. Drag that into the position we want. Right click on it, go projected view, and we'll do the top one. Right click create. Now we can add the dimensions, but we do need center lines for this one. So let's go over to annotate here and we'll do this create center line by parallel, center line by sector. We'll click that one and that one, and that one and that one. Is escape. Now you can drag this one down full length and you can drag this one over to here. And we can do a dimension from that point to that point. And you see how it's picked up on the very end of the line. So let's go OK for now. And I'm just going to drag that line in. You can see it's changing. So what we'll do is we'll put it so it lines up the bottom really good. And we'll double click this and we'll just say hide the value and we'll just put 50. And I'm going to go 0.0 for this one because we want a bit more accurate. So that's not perfectly where it should be. The other way to do that would be to draw a sketch on the top and then you get it absolutely perfect, but it's not really necessary for this one. And let's do overall height dimension. Okay, a dimension of this line, so we're going to have the same issue here. If we hover it over the side of the line here, we're going to get a little bit out, so that line wasn't quite meeting up. So let's um, override it, and we'll just put in 300.0. And we've got uh, angle dimension, so let's get back into dimension, click here and here. And there we go. Um, usually with degrees, I don't go to a decimal place. I would just go to a round number. So I'm going to do that there. Then I'm going to give this a dimension here as well. 100. And that one there is the outside, so I'm just going to type that on there. Outside. And I might line this up a little bit better with that one, just for aesthetics. Then I'm going to just drag this up slightly, it's not quite where I wanted it. And we need a center point, so let's grab this option here and hit the circle. Press escape and let's drag that center line all the way out there like that. Just um, just for the view. And we'll give this a dimension as well. So let's grab this one. Again, it's grabbing the radius because it's split down the middle. So anything that's not a full circle, it's got a split in it, it'll pick up on a radius. And I'm just going to override it by hiding it. And I'm going to say 200 inside 
go back to the start of it and I'm going to put the diamond symbol on there. And that appears to be all the dimensions we need. Next thing is just filling out the title block. Okay, let's make sure we save it. And the correct folder. So there's our IDW, and let's do export to PDF as well. Check the names there. Right, so let's look in the folder. So what I need from you guys is I need flat pattern of your branch, flat pattern of your trunk, and IPT file of the whole thing, the branch and trunk together, and the IDW and the PDF. So most of them, I don't need necessarily the individual parts here, but if you send them through, that's fine anyway.